I would like to uh, thank the organizer for inviting me to participate in the 32nd and annual International Prostate Conference update. I would like to uh, take this opportunity and focus on a very fundamental question that is, should age-related testosterone deficiency be treated? Why am I uh, focusing on this very specific question? I'm focusing on this very specific question because the FDA have made it clear that testosterone therapy is only indicated in men with classical hypogonadism, but not in older men. To really address this uh, really uh, controversial issue, I would like to pose three fundamental questions. One, does age-related testosterone deficiency merit treatment? Two, does testosterone therapy in older men with testosterone deficiency produce significant health benefits? And if the answer to these two questions is in the affirmative, then it's really going to be difficult to understand why does the FDA oppose, oppose the testosterone therapy in older men, but not in men with classical hypogonadism. To give a brief background, uh, a, a consensus panel of experts met in Prague in 2015, and uh, they came to a number of resolutions. And I'm just going to take couple of these resolutions to highlight how important this issue is. One is that the negative effect of testosterone deficiency on a human health and quality of life are well demonstrated, well established. This includes signs and symptoms of testosterone deficiency, metabolic syndrome, obesity, and increased mortality. The other uh, resolution indicate that there's really no age specific uh, uh, condition at which testosterone is indicated for one particular age or another. This brings me to the more important question. Does testosterone therapy in older men produce pronounced health benefits? And I think the answer is yes, based on the most recent testosterone trials from the United States and the testosterone trials in Australia. And I'm going to take a couple of minutes to just highlight the findings of the testosterone trials from the United States. Uh, these are the largest uh, testosterone trials. It included 788 men, mean age 72. These are randomized uh, controlled placebo trials. They are funded by NIH. All these seven trials have been published. What I would like to highlight is that the findings from these trials indicate that the overall, uh, the overall uh, sexual function is improved in men with, treated with testosterone than in men who remained untreated. And this is all aspects of sexual function have been improved. And this is not only in the sexual function trial, but also in all seven trials. I think what's really important is that these trials have highlighted something very relevant. That is men with anemia, irrespective of whether it's of known or unknown cause, have demonstrated increased hemoglobin levels. And this is very important because of the overall physical well-being of these older men and the amelioration of anemia. Therefore, testosterone therapy in older men merits, merits recognition. I think what's profound, and I find it very important, is that testosterone therapy in older men improved volumetric bone mineral density and bone strength, both in the spine and the head. Why this is relevant? This is relevant because in frailty and potential bone fracture, older men are more susceptible to bone fracture. Therefore, testosterone therapy in older men with testosterone deficiency is very, very important to men's health. To summarize, although I didn't show all the data, to summarize the testosterone trials that's done in the US, testosterone therapy in older men with low testosterone produced improvement in all aspects of sexual function, improvement in walking distance, albeit with a small amount, slightly improved mood and depression symptoms, improved hemoglobin and corrected mild and moderate anemia of both known and unknown causes, markedly increased volumetric bone mineral density and estimated bone strength. I would like to highlight one other important observation that is 
there was no increased cardiovascular events or prostate cancer risk. Also, the trials reported that fewer hospitalization were reported on men with testosterone. Clearly, the testosterone trial provides significant evidence that testosterone therapy in older men uh, is merited. The trials in, the, in Australia, which were focused on a group of men uh, with uh, diabetes, highlighted something very important in, in that oral glucose tolerance test, which is greater than 11, which is greater than 11.1 nanomolar, was reduced in men treated with testosterone compared to men who remained untreated. That's based on a uh, uh, two-year uh, two study. But this trial has highlighted something much more relevant. That is, testosterone therapy prevented progression from prediabetes uh, to diabetes, as you can see here. Men on testosterone uh, reported 7.6% of these men progressed into diabetes, where are almost 15% progressed into diabetes if the men were untreated. Also, the remission of diabetes was significant in men treated with testosterone compared to men who remained untreated, as you can see, 31.8% versus 45.2%. So overall, there is much reduction in type 2 diabetes in men treated with testosterone compared to men who remained untreated. Most profoundly, these trials supported the findings of the testosterone trial in, in the United States in that all aspects of sexual function were improved. As you can see here, erectile function domain, orgasmic function domain, sexual desire domain, intercourse satisfaction, and overall sexual satisfaction were all improved by testosterone treatment. So this brings me to a very uh, important uh, uh, question that is, why the FDA opposes testosterone treatment in older men but it's, uh, it indicates testosterone treatment in men with classical hypogonadism. The FDA makes an artificial distinction between these two diagnoses. That is, men with classical hypogonadism merit treatment, but men with age-related hypogonadism do not merit treatment. I believe this distinction is false. It's really based on no clinical or scientific meaningful evidence. There is no evidence to warrant such distinction. Also, the FDA has never demonstrated that one group of men with classical hypogonadism have different benefit of risks from those men with uh, non-classical hypogonadism or age-related hypogonadism. Therefore, this distinction is basically false. I also want to highlight that there is no evidence that the response to testosterone therapy of older men differs from that in men with classical hypogonadism. There's also no evidence to suggest that the differences might be attributed to differences in pathophysiological or physiological biochemical mechanisms. There's no such uh, data to support the FDA stat. Also, there's no evidence to suggest that age-related testosterone deficiency responds less well compared to men with classical hypogonadism. This brings me to very important point here. That is the three professional society that deal with uh, testosterone deficiency in men, uh, the American Neurological Association, the Sexual Medic Medicine Society of North America, and the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists. All three society do not recognize any age restriction for testosterone therapy, which is counter to the position taken by the FDA. I would like to also highlight that there is no scientific or clinical evidence to suggest that the risks of testosterone therapy in older men or men with age-related testosterone deficiency are worse or different than in men with classical hypogonadism. The FDA have never really shown any data to show that there's differences in the risks. What the FDA uh, have never provided any evidence that the cardiovascular safety in men with classical hypogonadism are different in men with age-related hypogonadism. In fact, there is no data on the cardiovascular safety in men with classical hypogonadism. This brings me to my final position, that is, the action by the FDA 
is not based on scientific or clinical evidence. And therefore, my answer to the fundamental question, does age-related hypogonadism merit treatment is yes. And I respectfully disagree with the FDA position. Thank you.